38,387 career points. The pinnacle of NBA scoring for nearly 35 years since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar retired following the 1989 season. But that all changed on February 7, 2023, when LeBron James eclipsed that mark to become the NBA's all-time scoring leader. But does that accomplishment make him the NBA's greatest scorer? Certainly not when talking about skill, scoring diversity, and overall ability in terms of shooting, ball handling, footwork. Of course, we are talking about a player's bag. And when evaluating LeBron James, he has a pretty undeniably limited one. But against all odds, LeBron James has still managed to become the NBA's all-time scoring king, even in the face of his minuscule to non-existent skill set. This is a story of perseverance, determination, and one player's never-ending assault of the basket, since he realistically can't do anything else. The bagless one, the LeBron James story. And we have seen a never-ending display of elite skill sets throughout NBA history, which seem to get progressively more and more absurd as the years have gone on. While you know the look of a huge bag when you see one, typified by a dazzling array of elite shot-taking and making abilities, endless range, and a series of sick handles, how does one actually quantify or define a bag? As with most things in sports, it will require the proper context. And from an early age and stage of his NBA career, it became evident that LeBron James was an absolute freak athlete, something which has remained the case to this very day, as his size and athleticism, coupled with his durability and passing ability, has made him one of the all-time greats. But to call him an all-time great scorer is a crime against the sport of basketball. And from the time LeBron entered the league, it was apparent he was a limited scorer. As in his first NBA season, during the 2003-2004 season, he shot just 307 of 925 outside of 5 feet from the basket, good for roughly 33%. And for virtually all of LeBron's first stint with the Cleveland Cavaliers, spanning seven seasons of his career, the vast majority of LeBron's points came on dunks, layups, or free throws, which is why when the pace of play was dialed down in the postseason and James came up against a defense committed to clogging the basket and taking his easy shots away, James struggled. This was particularly apparent when James came up against the Spurs in the 2007 NBA Finals and shot just 36% from the field for that series. The Celtics in the 2008 Eastern Conference Semifinals when he shot again roughly only 36% and when he shot 44% against those same Celtics in 2010. In fact, during his first seven seasons in Cleveland, James shot just 47.5% overall from the field and only only 45% during the playoffs over that same span of time. Less easy baskets for LeBron meant much less efficient scoring. As for the first seven years in Cleveland, he made 2,863 of his 4,210 shots from five feet and in to the basket, good for 68% field goal percentage, whereas he shot just under 36% from anywhere beyond five feet from the basket. But once LeBron took his talent to South Beach to build his first super team. His shooting percentages have gone up markedly as from the 2011 season, his first in Miami, spanning all the way to the 2023 season, this most recent one. James is shooting nearly 52.5% from the field during that time. That is a 5% increase from his first seven seasons with the Cavaliers. This must just be because LeBron has been improving his game and getting better at his craft. Well, actually, it just means LeBron has had to systematically surround himself with the perfect assortment of players in order to space the floor to a point defenses were incapable of clogging the lane. This ensured LeBron the ability to take more easy shots from five feet and in to the basket. For his 20-year career, LeBron James has attempted 11,287 of his 28,044 shots from within five 
five feet of the basket, which is just about 40% of his total shot attempts. On those such shots, he has a field goal percentage of nearly 71%. While he has made just over 37% of all of his shots throughout his 20-year career outside of five feet, yet we are perpetually inundated with fairy tales about the alleged efficiency of LeBron James due to his career nearly 51% shooting percentage. But DeAndre Jordan has the highest career shooting percentage in NBA history at 67.5%, and he also has the highest effective field goal percentage, while Rudy Gobert has the highest true shooting percentage in NBA history. All the while, the alleged greatest shooter ever, Steph Curry, is not in the top five in any of those metrics. Obviously, though, those other guys are primarily shooting dunks and layups, while Steph Curry is operating 25 to 30 feet away from the basket. But for some reason, the context of LeBron James and his lack of shooting ability and scoring prowess is never factored into his scoring limitations. Being the all-time leading scorer in NBA history does not necessarily make one a great scorer. It means you have had the durability and longevity it requires to reach those scoring thresholds. Carl Malone retired following the 2003-2004 NBA season, and for nearly 20 years, he was the second leading scorer in NBA history. He currently still sits number three on the all-time list, above players like Michael Jordan, Wilt Chamberlain, and Kobe Bryant. Has Carl Malone ever been discussed or regarded as one of the greatest scorers in NBA history? No more so than DeAndre Jordan or Rudy Gobert are thought of as basketball's greatest shooters. LeBron James has led the league in scoring just once in his 20-year career, while he's led the league just once in total points scored during that time. That one so right there made me the greatest player of all time. He isn't top five in most career 40, 50, or 60 point games. He is literally dwarfed by Will Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant in all three of those categories, despite playing more games than all three of them. In addition to his 37% career shooting percentage outside of five feet from the basket, LeBron James is also the NBA's all-time leader in turnovers, boasting nearly 500 more than second place on that list, Carl Malone. While LeBron James has displayed an unworldly amount of durability throughout his career, and no doubt has made exceptional career decisions on which super teams to assemble. One thing no one should mistake him for is having a robust basketball skill set. Because if you have really been paying attention over the last 20 years, or if you care to dig into the context of his scoring, it's pretty easy to see why LeBron James has one of the smallest bags we have ever seen.